If you are guys, White Springs Fishery in South Wales is very, very wet at the moment. And we're going to run you through a little bit of pellet fishing for skimmers. So I'm just going to run you through the rigs that I use, the methods of feeding that I use, and the bait that I use. You know, pellet fishing for skimmers is working up and down the country. Skimmers love pellets this time of year and the bream. So hopefully we'll show you how to do it today, as long as this weather sort of holds off a little bit. Right, so the bait we need. So it's kind of getting simpler, it's pellet fishing at the end of the day, all you need is pellets. So we've got some two mil micros here, just softened up. Micros are a great bait for dragging fish into your, into your peg. We've got some four mil expanders, which I'm going to be using on the hook. And then we've got some softened four mils, just wetting them up a little bit and softening them up to make them a little bit more attractive for the fish. Basically, that's all I've got on my side tree. Two mil micros, four mil softened pellets, and some four mil expanders. And that's all you need to have a bumper day. It doesn't have to cost the world. Nice cheap bait bill, and you can catch some mega, mega weights doing it. So guys, let's run you through the rigs. You know, this is the business end at the end of the day. So, first up is my sort of rig that I would go to straight away. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a six slip. And this is sort of the rig that I would start on normally. 013 mainline, 4x12 F1 pallet. I got a little number 12 just under the float there, just so I can see if the float moves. 013 mainline, and then just at the business end there, I don't know whether you can see it, but it's just a, a little reverse taper of number 11s, down to a 09 hook length, and an 18 SFL hook. Just, I like that sort of reverse taper in the bottom third of my rig. Just, it, it helps the bait act naturally. And also it keeps all my rigs straight to the bottom of the rig. So that's a really good way. Shorty with number 11s. But that's a, that's a great rig that is for catching sort of all types of fish, roach and skimmers, but especially when they're not feeding properly. So my second rig is, same again, six slip. 4x12 F1 pallet, 013 main line, exactly the same. But as we get down to the business end, the difference on this one is I've got a 3 inch hook length, a number 11 on top of the hook length, another number 11, sort of 5 inches above that, and then a bulk of number 11s, 5 inches above that again. <clears throat> now, the reason for this is if I get a lot of fish in my peg and you know, I get a lot of indications. I want to be getting clean bites. I want, to, I want my rig to be showing up those indications and giving me those bites a bit quicker. So that's why I've got that number 11, three inches away from the hook. If I can get a dropper closer to my hook, then I'm going to magnify those, those indications and magnify the bites. So that's my sort of bagging rig when I've got lots of fish in my peg. So that's the two rigs. I'll be feeding with pole pots on the end of them. I've got two different pole pots, one with a little, a little hole in, just to sprinkle some bait, bait out, and then one with a bigger hole, just so I can clump, clump a few soggy micros in, and just, just sort of put it on the surface and let them come out themselves. So these are my two pole pots I'm going to be using. I'm also going to be setting up a, a 250ml pot, just in case I need to dump a bit of bait somewhere, but we'll go through that when we sort of the feed in, in a bit. So let's go on to the session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed one line straight in front of me of 13 metres, where I'm just going to use a kinder pot, tap a few micros in, just to get the fish into my swim, and then try and catch the fish that way. I'm going to feed a line off at an angle, with a palm full of bait, sort of 50 mil of micros, and I'm going to feed that and leave it alone for a sort of an hour or so, just to, to drag a lot of fish into my peg, and keep them there, and hopefully, once that sort of instant negative line that I'm going to go on to start with, dries out, because they never seem to last on that line, once that dries out, I can drop in onto that line, there's already fish in my swim. So I'm going to just get a big 250 pot. I'm just going to grab, there you see that, just a palm full of bait. So it's sort of 50 mil of bait. I'm just going to put that on our left hand line. You know, like 50 mil of bait is not 
massive amount, it's not going to overfeed it. But what it will do is it will help to drag. Just spread it over a bit of an area. Don't want to keep it all tight. What it will do is it will help to drag a few fish into the area. So I plumbed up two lines of 30 metres, plus a line at 14, just to, just in case I need to have to go past that feed. Sometimes those fish back off, and just by going a metre past, can be really, 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 really good. Like so, I'm just going to kick off with half a small kinder pot of micro pellets just to kick the swim off. You know, I'm going to be like sort of quite negative on this line because I want to. Pellets are quite instant. It's quite an instant beat, so I want to try and be quite negative, just drag a few fish into the peg. And then once I've got those few fish in, try and catch them. Micro pellets is a brilliant way to sort of drag fish into your swim. You always seem to get good response. Now you notice that um, I said I'm using an F1 pellet, pellet flow for skimmers. Now, the reason I do this is because I feel 1.5 mil bristle. I see loads of people fishing for, for skimmers with like 1 mil bristle floats and 1.2 mil bristle floats. Well, I feel that that 1.5 mil bristle just allows me to dot the rig right down to a pimple. and see those little, those little dinks that we're after. Normally, normally you get quite an instant response. Normally it only takes sort of five or 10 minutes to get a bite normally. Pellets are really good for that. Very, very uh, wet today. Very moist. There we are. There we are. We're straight in there now. So that's what I mean by pellets being a very instant bait. So when you go in, and normally it does not take you long for a fish to, to pick out those micros and to get a bite. Now, just use a puller bunk to strip a bit of six out, just to line them. There's a, a good, Bunch of skim at the start. So they're the sort of skimmers you're looking to catch. Like I said, they're straight on the beat normally. So that's a great sort of start of the session. Second drop and we got one, got one, so. Slip another Form the expander on. Because we caught that one quite quickly, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna feed a great deal. So literally a tiny tiny pinch of pellets. Probably the same as what I fed that time, like eight to eight to ten pellets. I'm just gonna pull back out and sprinkle them in. I 
loosen all my rigging, just holding out the water, and then just lowering it the last sort of 10 to 12 inches, just giving any fish that are down there a chance to see it fall. You know, this lake's not massively coloured. And I think the fish do like to see, like to see the bait fall. So, now this is a really great way to to start a match, especially if you're you're fishing for silverfish. You can always get a real good start fishing pellets, just tapping a few micros in. Now don't get me wrong, you can never ever just empty it and catch one a bun on this. It always goes funny at some point and that's why you've got the other sort of lines and you're of a bait. Try and keep fish coming. But this is normally good for a few fish to start with. And then like I said earlier, I fed that a sort of palm full of bait, that 50 mil of micros off to the left hand side. And hopefully that'll drag some skimmers in. Keep them mooching around in that bottom for a for a short period, and then when this swim dies, hopefully we can drop on that line and just kinder a really small amount of bait and catch a a good run of fish. There we are, and have a little have a little bite there. Another, another skimmer. Now this is typical of typical of commercial skimmer fishing with pellets. You know, you, you're just feeding a very, very small amount of bait, and you get an instant response. It's, it's the keeping them keeping them coming that's the that's the hard thing. So. No, we'll, we'll catch what we can off this line now and then when it goes a bit thin I'll uh, show you what I do to carry on catching. There's another beautiful skimmer. So we just had a really good run on our line that we've been feeling quite negatively. And it's probably 25 minutes, 30 minutes gone. You know, we've had a really nice run on it. Probably caught eight to nine skimmers. But now, even though I'm feeding very little bait, there seems to be a lot of fish in the swim. So with this, with this little reverse taper rig, <coughs> what's happening now is I'm getting quite a lot of indications that are not turning into fish. I'm going to give it one last little go now. And I'm going to change that, that positive rig with the three inch up length. Just to see if I can, yeah, I'll have a little, a little bite straight away then. So there's a lot of fish in the swim now. So this is this is where this is where you need to start thinking about your match or your session and how you can carry on catching. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up that, that positive rig. Put a formal expander on again. And same again, just feed a tiny amount of bait. And just 
this time, I'm going to be fishing with that more positive shotting pattern. Now, with having that number 11 right close to that hook like that, you know, on a three inch up length, you should have more positive bites, especially now there's quite a few fish there. Now, normally, you wouldn't start on this rig because it is very, very positive. But once those skins are there in the area, they are. I'll bite straight away then. Just bumped in. This goes to show there's a lot of fish there at the moment. Now if this carries on, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll start feeding a few softened four mils instead of instead of the micros and try and settle those fish down a little bit just because the micros do drag a lot of fish in and just turns the, the, the swim into a little bit of a mess sometimes just lower down the last 10 inches and what I'm expecting is a real quick sharp jag in there We're fishing, fishing this rig, the bites are a lot more positive, they're just a real sharp dink. We're on that um, reverse tape base, you get a lot of indications, a lot of lifts before you have, before you have that, that bite. We're just looking get a few more positive bites really. There we go. Oh. Just missed the bite then. The light's not very good here. It's, uh, making it hard to see the float, especially when there's a bit of a ripple on it. You know, we've got our float dotted, dotted down with a pimple. Because these bites are... Uh, they're hard to see at the best of times, so... Quite dotted down with a pimple and you just see it... Uh, waiting for that... There we are. Nice little bite there. It's a little bit better than more what we was getting. And this is this is really where this rig comes into its own. Is when there's quite a lot of fish in your peg and you get an indication of the missed bites. You now this slightly slightly more positive rig. Slightly more positive rig. Just get you a few extra bites. We'll just try that again before we before we start altering the feed in. You know, perhaps we can get another, another nice little run on this now before we have to 
change the feed in to suit. So we'll just go back out. The same again. Being quite accurate with that, that feed and and obviously lowering the rig over the top. It's always good to work your rig with pellets. You know, a little lift and drop. And sometimes they bites a little bit quicker than just sitting there and waiting. So don't be afraid just to lift your rig out of float length. Just lower it back in. Just a little gentle lift and drop. Try and entice a bite. Put a good amount of fish. Feeding micros. Now we caught some on our reverse tape, but then when they've when those fish have sort of come in and started feeding a bit more aggressively, we caught a few on the more positive rig. But what's happening now is it seems to be fish in the peg, but you can't get a positive bite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this quick, uh, quick go this time. And then I'm going to change to feed in four mils. Or soften fours, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go just a foot past where I've been feeding. And I've done this loads of matches and it's amazing how how good it can be there we go on well, that could be a carp i could no, look, no, see what it is I think it is a carp. Just can't help them sometimes, they do uh, I mean, to make a nuisance of of the silver fish fishing, but no, no, we did skim it. So that's a prime example. That is. So what's happening now out there is It's a good skimmer, but that was foul luck, that one. So that tells me that you know, those bites I'm having, those indications, the way I've caught those skimmers, what I've done is they come in and they've, they've messed that bottom up. And you see a little bit of fizzing out there. So what we do to combat that is, like I just said, we go slightly past Slightly past that food, and all we'll do is we'll feed, we'll feed a few softened four mils, so we'll feed about, not many, five or six softened fours. And all we'll do is we'll go, I've got a dolly butt on my pole, so what I'll do is I'll go the dolly butt past where we were fishing, and hopefully that'll be a little bit better bottom, so we can get some cleaner bites, because what happens is, they come in amongst the silt after those micros digging around and it makes a bit of a mess at the bottom so and that's when you start foul looking fish and missing bites just tap those 
and falls out. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it is starting to fizz now. So as I said, that's only half a foot to a foot past where I initially, initially caught a few. And you get this on a lot of commercials, where the bottom's silky, and these skimmers do make a mess of it. And when, when this happens, you've got to cut those micros out, because those micros is what they dig around in the bottom for. The mic was a brilliant idea, yeah, straight away. Straight away, a couple of hard, well, softened four mils up. So the four mils behind it, just past, just past the initial feed. And we, you know, we missed that one bite, and then we're straight into a fish, and it's in the mouth. And it was a nice clean bite as well, so. You know, this is, this is what you want. This is what you want. You want to be catching them nice and clean. Nice and clean and, you know, those beautiful fish like that. So, we'll have another go on this now until, until this dies. You know, but we've had a brilliant start where we've caught sort of like eight to, eight or nine fish on micros initially. And we've then we put our positive rig on when I felt like there were too many fish in your swim. We caught another three or four on our positive rig over over the initial baited area. Now we've just gone, you know, a dolly but past. Feeding some softened fours and we're straight into fish. And this is how you sort of manage your, manage your peg with different feeding patterns to keep fish coming. It's becoming clear now that even though I started feeding four mils and it's settled them down a little bit, the bottom is becoming a little bit of a mess out there. There's quite a lot of fizz in now. Feels like there's fish in the swim, but it's really hard to get on the hook and get. you know, those positive bites that we need. So, if this happened in the match now, if it happened in the session, what I would be tempted to do now is to restart that swim a little bit further out because, you know, the, the, the bottom is, the bottom sort of gone to a mess here now and it's all fizzing. So what I want to do there now is I want to Go a little bit further out, maybe half a metre to a metre, you know, a fair way away from it so that the bottom's still natural, it doesn't be messed up. And I'll just tap some sort of four mils and just start again with four mils to, to, to try and drag a couple of fish off that initial feed. So there's going to be a lot of fish on that, on that area where I initially fed, digging around in the silt now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just 
add a section on on the end of my pole. I've already I've already plumbed I've already plumbed the depth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that dolly button off. Put my 14 and a half meter section on. So I'm going about a good meter or so past past where I started now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Put a four mil pallet on. Now this is this is brilliant. This is, but you don't want to do it too quick. You want to try and catch as many as you can off that initial feed. So I'm just going to put eight softened four mils in that pot. Now I've already plumbed up out here, so I know. I know it's the same depth as that 30 metre line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ship out. And by just tapping sort of those eight 4 mil pallets in, and not, not putting a lot of bait there to mess the bottom up, but just enough, just enough to drag a handful of fish away from my initial feed. And normally, normally you get some clean bites there and catch a good run of fish. You now eventually they will, they will mess the bottom up there as well because they're feeding, you know, they want to eat and they're searching for those pellets. So eventually they will, they will eventually mess that, mess that swim up as well. But, you know, we've already fed that initial, that initial um, area at 30 metres. You know, and there'll be fish mooching around and digging around in our bottom for those micros for quite a while now. So all you need to do they are, look straight away. Straight away, just tap in a few pallets. Just enough to drag a couple of fish away from that initial feed, and you're straight back into fish. And like I said earlier, this, this, this can be mega, this can, you know, depending on how long you can catch on that, on that initial feed. Well, this 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 is this normally is mega. You normally catch a real good run of fish. That was a beautiful size skimmer again, for the 10 ounce, 10, 12 ounce. You know, some of them are slightly bigger than that, but and you just repeat the process. Do you mean we sort of we fed that initial line where we caught some caught some fish on micros? You know, we've got it started, we drag fish into the area and all it is all it's about now is catching those fish and getting cleaner bites. Now like I said just now, when this when when this swim sort of dies and those fish you know do make a mess of this bottom again, I'll do exactly the same as what as what I did on that 30 meter line. I'll just put my dolly but into the end of my 14 metre section and just go a foot past and have another little run. And it's just a matter of then moving around your swim to keep fish coming. So you could go a foot to your left, a foot to your right and just reset that little trap just to drag a few fish off, off the main feed. And don't forget, we have, we have still fed this, this line off, at the, off to my left hand side, where I fed a palm full of bait at the start. Now, there was a little bit of fizzing on that earlier, so there's obviously fish there as well. So if, when the time comes that this, this line 
goes. So what's happened now is I've had another little run on that 14 meter line, just tapping some softened fours in, but it, the bottom's gone to, gone to mess on that now, and all in that area between 13 to 14 meters is fizzing. It's blowing and fizzing, and there's fish there, but it's very hard to get them on the hook. So what I'm going to do is that line that I fished fed earlier, which was 30 metres at an angle, where I just put that, that sort of palm full of loose in. I'm just going to drop on that line and see if any fish have settled on it, because these, these ones on this right hand line, they've settled, but they're really making a mess of the bottom. So, just going to have a little look. on this line just to see see if anything settled over it and we'll just repeat the process we'll um, repeat the process we'll go on it see if we can get a little bit of a run by tapping just a few micro pellets in see if we get a quick instant response Yeah, straight away. I don't think that's what we wanted to catch. I think that's more of a car. Now that is not what you want when you go on a, on a new line because he'll make a bit of a mess of it so we'll have another little look see if we can catch a few more on that line but um, we certainly don't want those carp coming in there and making a an even more mess than what the skimmers are making so just uh, got back in there. Just a, just a little bit of micro, sort of ten to start, ten or twelve. You know, we don't need a lot of bait. We fed that, fed that fifty millimicros at the start, which have obviously dragged a few fish in because that carp was straight on the bait there then. So. Um, we'll uh, just sprinkle a few more in and see if there's any skimmers weak in there. Normally this is a good way of catching a real quick run of fish. You know, priming our, priming our line at the start. Letting them gain a bit of confidence there. And then obviously when they when they're confident they're on the go, you can sort of get in there and 
get some quick weights. Yeah, straight away again. So just by feeding that little bit of bait at the start, and just leaving it alone and letting fish sort of settle over it and get confident. Just gives you that little run of fish. And just keeps you ticking over. Just keeps you ticking over when, when those uh, initial fish on those lines you start off on sort of die of death. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to say you're going to catch on this for the rest of your session. But you'll certainly have a nice little run of fish on it. And um, once, once sort of they're gone from here, you know, we can repeat the process of what we did on that initial line. Just go just past your, your baited area. You should have another little run, run of fish on that. And hopefully, that'll sort of see you through to the end of the session and keep you catching all the way through it. If it doesn't and it dies, just so quick that is. You know, we started off out the negative, just catching a few fish. You know, like I said, Palace is an instant bait. And uh, we started off catching a few, just ticking along. But uh, since we've gone onto this line, you know, they'll be primed up, left alone. You know, it's so quick now. We were really sort of putting under the sword, but uh, I'm not naive enough to know to think that it's going to carry on like this because I know that it won't. But by just repeating what we did on my first line, I know we're going to catch a few more fish. And if if it really gets hard. You know, and you, you're not getting any more fish. And you need to, to catch some more fish from somewhere. And you can always plumb a new line up and just start again, like we did at the start. And just be out of the negative and just feel your way back into it. And you should just catch a few more fish again. Another one. You know, you carry on catching you know, fish this sort of size, pound, pound and bigger. You know, when you catch at this rate, you're going to be on for a real big weight. No, probably not. Probably not all day. So after that good run I just had on that left hand line, we primed up. It's starting to do exactly the same as the other line. You know, there's a bit of fizzing, a bit of blowing going on, fish, fish messing up the bottom in the silt. So I'm just going to do exactly the same. 
just added the added the section on again and I'm just going to go a metre past and just tap a few softened fours in and see if I can get a response and keep catching a few fish. Here we are. And that just proves proves a point. The you know, proof is in the pudding. It goes if he just finds himself a nice clean bit of bottom again. Start again and you're straight into fish. And that's how you keep that's how you keep the fish coming right the way through the session. We've got a great day catching it in today. Typical size fish, pellet fishing. I see people pellet fishing and sticking to one line, you know, having a real good sort of run early, early doors, and then can't understand why you didn't catch for the rest of the match. And you know, you follow these sort of these sort of rules of you know moving past the bait and starting again, and you know, you'll, you'll definitely keep fish coming. Well, that's what it's all about, you know, we all want to catch. We all want to catch lots of fish. Win matches. Do well. And little, little things like this. Just managing your swim. Knowing when to, when to move, when to change rigs. Is, uh, there's all the little finer details that put more fish in your net there, another one in there. Well, that's, that's instant straight away. Just as that. Just as that swim started to die. You know, we've gone that metre past. Started again. And we're straight into fish. So I'm going to fish on for a little bit more now. But we'll end the video there on that fish. Beautiful white springs, white spring skimmer. I hope you've learned a little bit about pallet fishing for skimmers. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And join me on my next one.